let, let's get to uh, let's get to the wrestling then and with AEW and you know I, I said to start the interview how Double or Nothing kicks off the summer, mm-hmm. um, but to me it's so cool because it's like a a hallmark, a point of like, oh, this is another year for AEW. And this year specifically, five years, that's a benchmark, that's a landmark. And the fact that it's returning to MGM Grand Garden Arena. So with nostalgia and all of that, um, it it shocks me, and is this correct? You and Max, your first match together was on AEW TV, correct? Correct. That's crazy. And then afterwards, the contract got offered? Yes. So what happened was I was uh, in an interesting, unique position where I was choosing between the two companies. Caster was somewhat uh, in that same scenario. Um, and Tony found out, brought me down there, and I happened to get into an elevator, and there was Max Caster, who uh, he trained at Creator Pro Wrestling in uh, Long Island. I was in Creator Pro New Jersey. I think we wrestled each other once or twice. We were aware of each other. Wouldn't really call ourselves friends. We just knew each other in passing. And I go, oh, what are you doing here? He goes, I'm here to see Tony. And I go, oh, why am I here to see Tony? Not knowing we were both there to see Tony together. And um, then eventually we got filled in that um, he wanted to meet with the both of us. We met with Tony. Um, and he was like, hey, I have this idea for you both to be the acclaimed. We're like, what is that? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just know that Max raps and, you know, I'm, you know, a good wrestler. Let's see what you got. We went out, we wrestled best friends, came back. I happened to see him give him, uh, give someone the thumbs up. And the next thing you know, we had contracts in front of us. And I was like, yep, this is where I want to be. So with that, like, there's two parts that's interesting to me. Um, I guess I've never been in that position, but I know that there's others where they're basically essentially trying out for the radio. So they'll come in the weekend and they'll do a weekend shift. Was there more pressure? Did you feel any pressure going into that match? Did it feel like that match was like make or break in terms of if you wanted to go to AEW? Or was it, no, I'm just testing this out. I want to see what this is like in comparison to your other options. Well, in, in truth, I had accepted an offer from the other place. They never said the contract. I always wanted to be here. I just didn't know if there was interest. I never heard back after my first dark match that I had. Uh, I tagged with Lee Johnson. and um, But I, my heart was always, I, I wanted to be at AEW because I saw what uh, what kind of vibe they had when the company first started. Like, this is cool. This is different. Breaking uh, barriers. Giving, doors. Breaking barriers. They're, they're giving opportunities to young up-and-coming pro wrestlers to be superstars. Like, I want to be here. And then especially when I was, um, my first time I was at Dark and I saw people like Sonny Kiss and Nyla Rose walking around being themselves and not feeling judged and feeling comfortable. And the way they present their LGBTQ talent made me feel even more comfortable that I wanted to be here. So when I um, heard that Tony was like interested in talking to me and I'm like, all right, well, I still haven't signed anything, so why not? So that was the pressure. It was, I hope Tony likes me, because if he doesn't, then I might have burned bridges everywhere. But, um... Ah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? like, well, if he doesn't give me the paper, well, now I'm... Yeah, I get... Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So there... And that, yeah, like you just said... And then we the delivered. We delivered. We had a great match, and, you know, next thing you know, we were the acclaimed, and Max and I were trying to figure out what the hell that was, and what our presentation was, and, you know, move sets and catchphrases, and hand gestures, and... Um, you know, we went from th- that, and I think 10 matches in, we were main eventing Dynamite with the Young Bucks for the tag team title. I'm like, what's happening? This is not, no, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story. Um, and just out of curiosity, too, like you said, you guys had known of each other. You guys have shared locker rooms, being on, on events and stuff. But you said it. You guys weren't friends. What was the conversation leading up to, okay, we're teaming together. I guess that's why we're both here. Like, even before you just talked about, well, what's our presentation and stuff going to be for the long term? But just in that moment going into that match, what were those conversations like? Um... Let's make it through this, that first yeah, one. It yeah. was like, let's just, yeah, basics, let's, let's get through this. Yes, let's just show them that we're really good professional wrestlers and that we're charismatic. Um, and then after that, once we had the contracts, it was, okay, well, you know, what do we need to do here? The owner obviously believes in us. He had a vision for us. One, we want to make him proud. And two, we got to figure out how do we get ourselves over? How do we get on, ourselves on television every single week? How do we develop as performers? And every day we would talk, we would call each other, um, talk for, for, first it it was getting to know each other as people, you know, because this is a person I'm going to be spending the next however many so years of my career with, I need to know who he is as a person, you know, what makes him tick, what, what, 
um, how I tick. So we spent a lot of time getting to know each other and then figuring out what our philosophies were on pro wrestling and just kind of using those things as jumping points to figure out what we want to do in the ring and how we want to present ourselves. And I think it's cool, again, with this being the five-year anniversary, uh, the, the aspect when you look at you guys and there's, a, there's other people, MJF, that the, I guess, like for someone like me, I would consider you guys the term, I guess, that's used as homegrown talent. Um, how much pride do you have that you guys kind of came in here and, and you, 10 matches in, you guys are facing the Young Bucks. Look at all the things you guys have accomplished. Like, how does that feel? There's there's pride in that, I'm assuming, right? Oh, yeah. So much. So much. We Max and I like to... Um you know, hope that people use us as a template for like new incoming people into the company who are um, young and upcoming stars as examples of like what to do of how to make things work. Because a lot of times you come right from the independence and you're thrown right into the deep end and you're on television and you know, you don't know what you think you know what you're doing, but you don't until you get out there and then you're just kind of, it's a sink or swim scenario. Like we don't have, um, we don't have a spot where we're, or, or uh, what do you call it? Like a, a performance center to yeah. uh, train five days a week to f- figure out everything before we get presented on TV. You got to do it live on TV in front of people, which is tough. And, and on TV, which and is like t- a whole different ballgame. That's also a cool thing because with us, you can see our development from start to finish. If you go back on YouTube and you look at the darks, you can see our very first match all the way up till now, like if you're if you're a fan, which is pretty cool. You can see the whole thing. You don't get that experience a lot because again, a lot of it is you know hidden in a warehouse and you just see a finished product of what you know you were doing there. Here, it's like, oh, I saw him from day one. I saw him from this point. And you're seeing the baby. Yeah, steps. They're, you're on the the journey with like people are on the journey with the acclaimed, which I think is another cool way or reason why people connect with us. I know that you've talked about how you will never, ever, ever, ever see the first entrance yeah. because of how awkward. <laughs> I will never watch it. Was that was that situation just in general, not just the entrance, um, without the music. Just the bars, but not outside of the entrance, just that match in that situation. Was it the most, and I don't mean this in a negative way when I say awkward, but was it like the most awkward situation you've been in? Um, yeah, I, honestly, yes, because, um, again, we didn't know what the acclaimed was. We knew uh, Castor was the rapper. And then I was like, all right, well, there's got to be a hype man, but I can't dance. I don't have rhythm. I'm not (laughs) much into like, like I'll listen to hip hop, but I'm like a, I'm not like a huge, um, overly huge fan. So I had a lot of learning to do. So I had to figure out what my role was. And the only advice I was given was whatever Max says, it's the most ridiculously cool thing you've ever heard. So I leaned into, hey, people like memes and people like using those uh, reaction photos to different stuff on the internet. So whatever Max says, I'm going to plant um, myself in front of the camera and make the most ridiculous faces that people can screenshot. But that first entrance, we hadn't thought of anything yet. So I went out as my indie five to a player look, and he's doing a rap with no music, acapella to. You talked. You guys have talked about how you didn't match. <laughs> <Yeah, it laughs> Let's We gear. were in uh, gear didn't match. There was nobody in the audience because it was during uh, the pandemic. There was like just a couple of like the indie wrestlers ringside like making noise, probably laughing at us. <laughs> and it was just, ugh, just it's making me cringe thinking about it. But I'll never watch it again. But to your point, like you, you said a few minutes ago, like there's a beauty in the fact that that like that all exists and that's all a part of your guys' story. Yeah. Uh, and to see that culminate um, uh, into what it is now, uh, like the one thing that the one of my favorite things is there's this photo. And the Twitter account, and I was trying to search it, and I couldn't find it. And I know Max has retweeted it, and I'm sure you have too. It's a photo. I don't know if it's in, like, New York, but it's a crowded street. And if you're watching the video, we'll put it up, and I'll find it by then. But it's a crowded street. Everyone's walking. And then there's, like, this older dude with the scissor meat daddy oh, yes, t-shirt. Yes, yes. Like, when you see that, how does that make you feel? <laughs> It's proud. <laughs> yes. If, uh, Max and I thrive on weird things and weird scenarios. And if we can, you know, have people feel that comfortable with themselves to go out and rock that shirt and, you know, scissor other people and yell, scissor me daddy ass and, you know, in public and whatever. My I, fiance I think that's it, great. But it's cool. She's, I find that. To me be and my five year old son, and I'm like, he, he's doing it. That's. 
What do you mean? He's learning. It's a hit with 99% of the people. The 1% is a select group of moms that are not happy with their... Uh... You can't please everybody. That's true. <laughs> you really can't. <laughs> um, I, one thing um, I'm intrigued with is when it comes to the term heat, uh, what did you guys get more heat from? Was it initially some of Max's raps or was it the scissoring? No, the... Everyone hated us when we first came in. And that's why when, when I came up with the Everyone Loves the Acclaimed, I'm like, what would two bad guys, delirious bad guys think what's happening? Because any time we would perform, at least in the, because we didn't, again, there was no audience, so we had no idea what the feedback, live feedback was. We just had Twitter to go off of, which is never a good idea. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> and Twitter hated us. They're like, who are these two guys? We don't know who they are. Why are they wrestling the Young Bucks? These guys stink. You know, who are they? It was just over and it was bad. I was getting, I had to like mute my, a lot of my uh, notifications because it was just some pretty vile stuff. But at birth, everyone loved the acclaim out of it, which is one of our biggest catchphrases. Um, and that was like that for a while until we got back to live audiences and we did that first show in Jacksonville and the crowd erupted and Max and I were like, Oh, I think we're baby faces this whole time. Meanwhile, we thought people yeah. were, were hating on us. Um, but once we got back to live crowds and people were really on board with us, it was just a matter of trying to figure out how to take that to the next level.